Guys, if you've ever wondered what it's like to be a flight crew in the United States Coast Guard, we're about to find out. Just cheat. Cheat. That just that breathe it. Underwater? Yeah. I can't sink for the life of me. Why do we get paid to do this? This is cool. Yeah. I can't believe they get paid to do this. That's awesome. <laughs> what do you think of uh, these two Mamsy Pamsies here, these they're, YouTubers? They're doing pretty good so far. It's a, it's a modified syllabus. You know, when our air crews go through it, they're in full flight gear with weight on them. Um, these guys get to see how hard it is without all that stuff. Uh, but I think they're doing fine so far. This is gonna be, we'll I think this is, test this is gonna separate the men from the boys. We've, we've made some side bets. <laughs> all right. So we'll see how it goes. This next part is a 15 yard underwater swim. All right, what's about to happen here or not happen? Well, okay, what you're required to do is uh, swim 15 yards under the water the whole way and I, we'll see if we can accomplish this. You got going goggles for this? Yeah. Goggles? I'm going to take goggles. Okay. You want some too? Please. Are you doing it at the same time? I think. Should we do it at the same time or how are we doing it? Sure. Yeah, do it at the same time. time. Same time is more fun. So this underwater swim, it's going to be a real challenge for me because I, I can't sink for anything. Come on over here. I'm just going for number just, six. If I can get past that, I'll be happy. After a couple of strokes, just start slowly letting bu bubbles out of your nose. It tricks your brain into thinking you're breathing, so it gives you a few extra. Are you ready? All right, Let's ready? Go! Six! Oh. I did my goal. Six, I went uh, four feet. Well, as you can see, the training was not as easy as one might think, hence why I'm dry. And you are <laughs> wet. I passed. It wasn't easy. I knew one of us had to pass because one of us needed to save the other, so. We're going to be saving flight shops tomorrow. <laughs> Video briefing uh, here. Milwaukee's another big city. Yeah, yeah. Green Bay, Charlie Wisconsin. over here. Lieutenant we Commander Larry over, over there. So after the That's what we we'll get done right now. Uh, it's kind of stuff. Water season. Uh, the uh, Mac 10, the thicker one, not the place. Oh yeah, not that. She's from any of those. Oh, I can't do this one because we're no. going over water, right? Yeah, over water. Hi, I I'll tell you right now, these are going to be warm. Uh, You're going to be warm inside of this. Yeah. Do you, do you mean like toasty warm or like too hot? Kind of like. Kind of like toasty, warm, like by the fire with a nice. I have a feeling yeah. it's all going to be a nice way tumbler of scotch. Yeah, classic, kind of, classic warm. Maybe you got your yellow lab laying there next to you. What There's about, nobody that is in the Coast Guard that's our size. No. What about just? A, does it need to be a padded? Oh, because it's got to be floaty, right? Is that the deal? Yeah. Weather, weather's good. We got a kind of an overcast ceiling out there right now. Um, probably around uh, 2,000 feet. So uh, that shouldn't be any problem for us today on flight. Uh, weather's uh, no issue. Double IMC plan, inadvertent IMC. If uh, for some reason we go inadvertent IMC today, there's a freezing level at 3,000 feet. So that'll kind of uh, keep us uh, from climbing up and getting a, a clearance with Minneapolis Center. So if for some reason we go inadvertent IMC today, we'll execute the boldface procedures. And uh, depending
depending on where we're at in the, in the AOR, <clears throat> I'll either try to do a slow approach on the instruments down to the water and break out of it, or we'll do a 180 on modes to get right back out of where we got into it at. We'll talk through it as a crew when it happens, but I don't see that being an issue today. We're gonna have to work real hard to get into other double RNC. <laughs>
Coast Guard 6511, Traffic City Tower, taxiway Delta, Delta 2 intersection, clear for takeoff, turn left on course. 6511, Roger, clear for takeoff. Alright, guys, Justin, 9 Papa, as you're heading the right down for runway 36, traffic is a Coast Guard helicopter departing taxiway Delta, Delta, uh, Delta, Delta 2 intersection, northbound. So, so, yeah, so that's the opposite traffic. Alright, N1 source TFG looks good. Five, five. I am on the go. Here we go, guys. This never gets old. Alright, working through translational lift there, got my nose down 8 to 10 degrees, and we are on the go. Alright, there's 80 knots already, and I'm weak level climbing out. Echo, Travis City Tower, Pruz is requested to report downtown inbound. We'll let you know downtown inbound. And left turn, you can already see East Bay there, like I said, very close. And we're going to go out here and try to find the contract boat, they're somewhere out here in the middle of the bay, so... We'll find them and we'll start hoisting with them. So what we got today, guys, uh, flight chop, he's uh, falling overboard, and we are doing a simulated emergency. Tower, November 296, November We're going to go rescue him. Short runway 36 off the car. Right? Uh, I think he'll be south. all right. All right, see, uh, you can see the contract boat right out there. It's uh, 11 o'clock. What do you guys call it, target? Yeah, it's the target. Uh, if if we were doing a rescue, it'd be vessel in distress, or... Well, we got flight chops in distress. Flight chops in distress. We got flight chops in distress in sight. Should we, do you think we should go assess, assess the situation here? Yeah, we're going to do that. As soon as he gets his uh, radio guards, we're going to go through our 200-foot checks, and uh, we're going to come down and give him a little flyby. Roger, uh, I'm going to transition to a gunner's belt. Yeah, please point. do. If you guys want to get ready for your gunner's belts, we'll uh, get the door open. We'll do a couple low passes over the top of them, and then we'll get ready to go. While you're doing that, I'll get a vessel brief, okay? Roger, sir. Time is crucial. We got flight chops in the water, and we don't want them to get hypothermic here, so hopefully we'll get, get them out of there soon. Pisces from the 6511. Let me know when you guys are ready for a vessel brief. 6511, Pisces, go ahead, sir. Hey, Roger, that. what are you guys showing for surface winds down there today? 6511, Pisces, uh, it's about 010, about 12 to 14. Okay, Roger that. If you want to pick up a heading of about 020, we'll uh, adjust you as necessary. Give me a clutch ahead uh, and um, lower stow security booms, black staffs, rigging, loose gear that might conflict with hoisting today. Course coming open. 6511 Pisces, we have 08 POV. Okay, Roger that, 08 POV, and uh, we're going to come down, do a uh, couple slow flybys, and then we'll be ready for hoisting. We'll let you know when to get underway. Doors open, lock. 6511 Pisces, Roger that. All right, that's pretty cool. So every target vessel, you get the information from them, you want them to turn into the wind? If, uh, if we're hoisted into a boat, it helps if they turn into the wind and make way. A lot of the boats that we go out to rescue or conduct a rescue with can't make way. So uh, what we end up doing is either putting our swimmer in the water and the swimmer will swim over and climb onto the boat. Or if uh, the boat has some sort of distress like a fire or it's sinking, we'll have the people get in the water with our swimmer and then we'll hoist them with the basket, which you'll see today as well. Uh, we, don't, we don't always uh, get the luxury of giving a, a brief to the vessel like that. Sometimes we're not able to in a real SAR situation. All right, we've got the vessel out there in front of us. You can really hear the blades uh, chopping through the air. Yeah, it's cool, isn't it? Love that sound. There's about 75 feet coming down. They look like they're in distress. Yeah, they do, don't they? I was going to say, Dan's got a good view back there. That's yeah, what about the mouth? Pretty awesome. All right, coming back around, we'll make our approach down to him, start hoisting. Yeah, they're, they're, it's chaotic back there on the boat, so hopefully uh, John is going to settle the situation down. Yeah, we'll send John down there and make sure everything's okay. I'm sure that's pretty uh, a risky part of the job is when you have uh, people that you're rescuing that are really not calm and collective. That's why John, uh, as a rescue swimmer, he gets paid to do. He gets paid to go down there and make sure everybody cooperates with what they you know, what we need them to do to rescue them safely, and uh, he's trained very well to do that. As you can see, me and Larry are both uh, tactical right now. 
I'm sure it even gets really tricky when you get swells, like on the open ocean or big lakes. Yeah, anytime you're hoisted to a boat. Right now, we got maybe like a one foot chop down there, not a big deal. But uh, sometimes the boats are very affected by the sea state. And uh, it gets difficult because as a pilot, when you get over the boat, you want to follow the motion of the boat. And uh, that will fluctuate your altitude quite a bit. So you have to work really hard on your instruments and listening to the, the flight mechanic to hold a solid altitude while that boat's bouncing underneath you. Another challenge for the flight mechanic in that situation is you know, managing his cable enough to where if a boat drops off the bottom of a swell, it doesn't yank the device off the boat. So it's, uh, it's, a, it's a delicate balance for sure. That's where Dan earns his money. That's where Dan earns the money. Now you can see that rotor wash really coming up on front of us here. That's because we don't have that forward momentum anymore. And uh, even though we do have a, a, a good breeze today, pushing that rotor wash a little bit behind us is still significant. Yeah, I can see that. And uh, when you're trying to rescue people in the water, that's something that's a big concern of ours, not putting that rotor wash on top of the survivor because you could do more damage to that survivor uh, with the rotor wash than they are actually. Where it gets real tricky uh, with the rotor wash, Stevo is uh, hoisting at night over the water. At night, we wear the night vision goggles. But wow, that adds a whole new element into it. Nighttime is a whole different story, but a, a big part of that rotor wash is if you get too low and you create that rotor wash, it, it's called what we call a milk bowl effect. So when we when we fight the milk bowl effect, we either got to get hoist from a higher altitude or or uh, get a little bit of forward momentum if that's a possibility. All right, there's flight shots getting ready to get in the water. Hopefully he survives this. Looks like he's going with the backwards fall That's technique. I give that about an 8 out of 10. I don't know if that was on purpose or not, but it looked pretty graceful. Yeah, I, I, you've got a different career if you stop flying airplanes. <laughs> yeah, Flight Chop, he drew the short straw on this one. He gets to go jump in the cold water and I get to hang out with uh, Larry here. Right, so basically the first thing we're going to do is we're going to move in and uh, we're going to do what's call, what we call a free fall deployment of the rescue swimmer. Okay. Uh, you'll hear me and Dan talk through it, but we'll get uh, John, our rescue swimmer, back there ready to go. And uh, we'll get as close as we can without putting the rotor wash on the survivor. And then we'll have John basically jump out of the helicopter and swim over and rescue those guys. Well, so John will be jumping out from about 15 feet? Uh, it'll probably be about 10 feet above the water as well to jump out. I like doing the free falls. The free falls are fun. You get nice and low to the water. And you got the crazy man in the back that likes to jump out. All right, good luck to John. Yeah. Sometimes if we get low enough, uh, his, he'll jump in the water and his splash will actually come up and back into the helicopter. Wow, that's pretty cool. Yeah, it's pretty fun. So anytime I put John in the door without any kind of harness on or anything, I got to be below 30 feet. Okay. Yeah, you wouldn't want to. Yeah. Just for action, you know, just in case uh, we took a roll or something. Part two complete, ready at four. Free fall deployment of the rescue swimmer. Going hot, Mike, check swimmer. Put on hot, Mike, check swimmer. Swimmer ready. All right. I have target in sight. Four and right, 15. Roger. Let's go right here. Roger. Just put him in right here. Roger that. Easy down. Come down. Stand by. Deploy your rescue swimmer. Swimmer away. Swimmer's on the water. Swimmer's okay. Clear back and left. Swimmer's coming out your three o'clock. Roger that. Peace command. Point the fleet flying going up. Hotline. I guess you also have to be careful that he doesn't land on the victim. Yeah, that's very true. That's why we keep him outside the rotor wash. All right, rescue check part two. They should be calling for the basket, Dan. Roger right that. There's the call for the basket. All right, uh, rescue brief. All right, brief, we're going to do a basket delivery to the survivor and the rescue swimmer, or basket deployment to the survivor and rescue swimmer. Any questions? No, sir. All right, this will be from 35 feet, Dan. Roger, right, setting up. Brief complete. That's the true definition of good CRM. CRM is absolutely crucial for what we do out here over the water. It's crucial to the safety and safe execution of all these hoisting evolutions we do. 
Service, check box two complete, ready at for delivery of the correct deployment of the rescue basket to the survivor in summer. Target to one o'clock, going hot mic, copy in. So I got hot mic, I have target site. Basket is going down, hold position. Roger, hold. Basket is going down. Basket is going down. Basket just blow the aircraft. Basket is down. Thanks for coming to visit us at Traverse City, man. Appreciate it. Glad to have you here. 